All right, well, that seems to have fixed it. Let me uh, just get this camera in a little better on what I'm inking today. Uh, do it that way or do it more this way? Sorry, I was fiddling around trying to just move the camera to deal with the weird zoom effect that was happening. Yeah, that should work. All right, um, do I even want to fiddle with some like public domain music? Oh my gosh. Um, I think I want to dig, just dig into this and uh, hopefully it won't be too dead without some music in the background bopping around. All right, so it's Catwoman. I, uh, um, I'm a little flustered because of all the tech issues. I mean, even my printer was screwing up earlier. Uh, so it's just been literally just been one of those days. And if you've been following any sort of news or something, it's been like one of those weeks. Um, yeah, so uh, drawing Catwoman, I'm doing the most current costume as I understand it. Um, pretty sexy with some like weird dropout cutouts just to break up the black silhouette. I, I usually my go to usually is the uh, the Darwin Cook design costume because I, I just love those goggles um but getting that yellow tint in those goggles is is actually one of the really attractive things to me as as, as a visual guy and i won't be doing that when there's black and white piece and i'm not sure if i'm going to do buildings in the back here um as i was drawing i wanted like leaning over the edge of the uh i was actually going to put some jewels hanging in a rather hand, but I figured a cat claw would be nicer when I was drawing. But uh, yeah, it just, it just ended up being kind of like um, just getting the figure right, leaning over the building. I think I'm going to do um, some stamp effects. Yay, that's me and my stamp effects. And actually have like a moonlit night and maybe some clouds and use the stamps to get that across. I haven't tried that before, so it's going to be a, a little on the risky side for me to to get that across um like just before i printed the pencil sketch onto this board here i, I was like not in love with like whatever i did a couple of different treatments and i wasn't in love with them so i figured what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna ink the figure first um and then react to the inked figure for what i do with the ledge of the building here and similarly i'm going to react to the uh the figure to do the sky. I definitely want to do some sort of moonlit night and imply clouds and stuff. So that that should that should go well with uh, the rubber stamps I've been using lately to build those textures and everything. And I might do some rubber stamp down in here, which means there'll be a, a weird period where I'm I'm um, um, taping stuff off, masking stuff off, possibly frisk it or, or post it notes. Uh, had to had to put some liquid down my throat because there was a lot of swearing while all all the uh, the tech stuff just wasn't working for me. Um, it's been a, been a while since I've dealt with uh, numerous tech issues all at once. Um, so that was that was just a surprise. It's like my printer updated um, two days ago. And I haven't printed anything since because I've just been like inking a ton of stuff and. Um, all the settings changed in terms of like paper quality and everything. And I had to start and restart it twice, which was a pain. And, um, and then uh, the laptop I just used specifically for streaming. Oh, let's get some more light in here. There we go. There we go. Is that better? I think that's better. And it, it um, if you were here a few minutes ago, you, you heard me frustrating because it was like way zoomed in. It wouldn't zoom out. Uh, I tried moving through different things, trying, and for some reason, Acer hid the uh, the shortcut to uh, Logitech Capture. Yeah, whole bunch of complaints, whole bunch of complaints. But you're here to to hopefully, if you're here, is anyone here? I don't see any chat yet. If you're here, say hi, please. Um. Uh. Yeah. So I'm I'm just gonna get to the inking here. So she's wearing these kind of like black flared gloves. Should I show over the face? No, you know what? I'm going to have to start with something that's uh, a little less important because of the weird energy field I'm feeling I'm existing in at the moment. 
just too many tech things just mess everything up and then that just makes everything bad. You know, at one point I was going to move that arm down, but it just didn't feel my, I, I had it down here and I had like the whole elbow thing and everything. Just, this just feels better. Gonna have to remember that this isn't a cutaway from the costume. Now, all the gloss in this costume, this kind of bothers me because um, if your goal is to, I don't like nighttime characters at all. I mean, I, everyone loves Adam Hughes's drawings and he always, you know, wraps them up tight in fetish gear, latex. So they're all hyper shiny and all sexy and all that. And I guess that works for comics, but there's still that part of me in my head that thinks if you're primarily a thief and you're wearing dark clothes, you want to wear matte dark clothes like a matte leather or a tactical fabric that doesn't reflect the light because i mean you're trying not to be seen man i mean it just doesn't uh oh you know what i forgot i forgot that that weird i just drew right on there uh weird circle she's got there because i mean she used to have that that pull ring from um darwin's design Templates here. Do I have anything I could use specifically for that? Maybe this one. So then it would be hanging down from there. And it's pretty big. It's about a third of the width of the neck, so about there. So if I did that, that would imply it's hanging right towards you. It's really hanging right from the midst of the clavicles. So let me, let me just draw this in here right now, quick. And do I want to do a. Here we go. There we go. It looks pretty chunky here. I don't know if you can even see it. it. Looks pretty chunky here, but when I, you know, pull the pull tab there, and I'm going to apply some seam running down through here and render a little bit for highlights and stuff, it'll it'll shrink pretty quickly. Um, do, do, do. Using a 005, which I generally only use for facial features or super fine details. I think this is Joelle Jones who drew this, and she's so fucking talented. Oh my god, is she talented? I do the ears at the side of the head, and I realize I kind of want. More of a flare out on the side. I did my pencils. I'll give her more of a cat head shape, I think. Just had another thought of something else I want to do, but uh, I'll think about that till I get there. Same width. Oh, I think I'm going to make that a little wider. Um. Cat claw hands. This hand's a little awkward, but I think I'm going to run with that because I don't want to spend more time fighting with it than I did initially. Um, so I got the head there. I like this going in there. I am going to do something to imply light, but not like super harsh highlights. So I might even do rubber stamps in her costume for the high highlight areas. Is the pectoral would come down in there, then this would be wrapped around the breast pretty tight. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to a 001. There, sorry, 01, not a 001, just to get better line quality on the periphery of the character. Be help if I got a better line out of this pen. Okay, it's flowing now. Always a little weirded out by uh, how people design 
the masks that go above the eyebrows. I get where having the line go right on the eyebrows almost makes it look like they don't have eyebrows, which is also weird. But like how far above the eyebrows do you go? And how much of that is a stylistic choice and how much of that is a design consideration for the costume itself? They're rotating it around. Still showing it up. All right. Every time I do like one of the uh, the core characters from Batman Year One, there's a part of me that wants to do like a super simplified Toth thing, which isn't my usual style, which is always like also a consideration when you're doing a commission. It's like they didn't commission you to try and draw like David Mazzuchelli. They, they kind of want you to draw it. Although I'm pretty sure they'd just be as happy. Like, well, you know, I can't do it. Well, Dave Mazzuchelli just happens to be here. Get him to do it. That would be a hell of a surprise, right? It's like, oh, I got, got this really cheap commission from Pace and it turned out to be Mazzuchelli. Oh. Hey, Richard Cox, how you doing? Should set up some sort of like a little bell or something when someone met, uh, pops up in chat so I actually don't ignore you guys. I like the idea that she's going to be backlit by the moon. So there won't any won't be any real highlights on the front part, and her face might actually be a little bit in shadow. Um, because what I'm thinking about with the eyes is to really get across that cat part that have the pupils lit up. Might even go back and make them a little bit bigger with some white paint. But again, that depends on everything else turning out all right. All right, glad to hear you're doing good there, Richard. Best name in the world. Which is almost true. I mean, the best world, best name in the world for a person is Indiana. But you know, as I understand it, the dog got that one. Be mindful of folds and stuff. Maybe some poles there. Well, that's these are the clavicles. This is where the clavicles would be. This would be the shadow of the, the deltoid. Want some shadow there. This would almost be would it be reflected light? Hmm tricky this one yeah as simple as this drawing is and this layout is i've set myself up a lot of problems that i haven't done in previous previous weeks yet let me get this line sorted out maybe i did draw it straight enough it's straight ish and there's a certain artist out there who uh hate drawing with a ruler um and i get why because the work is so fluid but sometimes you just need that ruler to get a sense of like where you're going to flex the other lines. There. Yeah, these bricks I drew were way, way off. So I'm going to have to ignore the blue lines there.
I need some sort of support there. Let's do this. This pen might be dying. Maybe the ball's just wearing out. Hmm. Give it a few more minutes to try. Some brushy black filling in uh, in a bit. After I get everything in that line, go back and redo the details on the face. So I'm happy with them as I bounce around doing all sorts of different stuff. There's um, certain things like you, you draw books for a long time. You pay attention to comics for a long time. You get used to things like the way Adam Hughes draws Catwoman and you see it. I, I wouldn't say in fact, but you see other artists pick up that bit um, where it's no longer like just a generic woman with a cat costume. And you got Adam Hughes who essentially made her Audrey Hepburn for a while. And now there's this little bit of Audrey Hepburn that creeps into anyone who does any sort of realistic Catwoman drawing. And it's really hard to not, not just keep running with that. And, you know, yeah, I kind of missed the combat boots. I think, I think they gave a lot of the best touches from the Catwoman costume to the new Batgirl costume. Um, like those boots and all that stuff, all that really fun stuff. So I like that, like that. Something like that. I think I do that thumb very clumsy in the initial pencils. It's going to be essentially a silhouette of a tiny, tiny hand in the background here. Okay, I'm going to jump up to the three for this foreground hand, see if I can make it work. Let's, let's get these lips black first. This figure Catwoman was a uh, black lipstick girl, especially at night. It's cutesy enough. It, it, it hits that, that little bit of Audrey Hepburn without being Audrey Hepburn type of thing. At least I think it does. If I'm wrong, you guys should tell me. Don't let me delude myself like that. This arm comes forward. I'm going to go heavier with the outline, but I'm going to be... See, this is going to be all in shadow, so I'm going to want some light hitting here, but I also want it to be strong. Strong line work to base it on to make it pop forward a bit. I was actually thinking, um, I found a uh, folder with all my lessons from the, um, the last college I taught at. And I mean, the one problem with teaching was that every single year they, they insisted I make the course easier so I could pass more students. Um, uh, and I ultimately quit because they kept passing students I failed, which did nothing for the students who did the work and deserved it. But anyway, so I got all these lesson plans and I could probably turn those into 
um, decent little mini video courses. Um, I don't know that I would teach the course the way that those lesson plans are, but it'd be really easy for me to um, turn those le lessons and demonstrations into videos here and keep them ostensibly separate from any other type of educational or drawing instruction work I would do on YouTube. I mean, at one point I floated taking all my notes for, I did a hand course for um, an online instruction company years ago. Oh my God, we're going to back about eight, nine years ago. And Artsy, might've been called Artsy or some, Craftsy or something like that. Some weird little thing like that. And they got bought out. Uh, in typical fashion, it was like, uh, they got reasonably successful. Uh, they got bought by a bigger company. They made changes to make their investors happy without checking with all the artists and crafts people that were who had made the videos for them or with them. Um, and uh, then they shut everything down because no one wanted to work with them anymore. Because, you know, who wants to be screwed over constantly just showing up for being screwed over like that. And then they got sold out and they wanted to bring it back. And they asked me to bring the hand course back and sign some paper. And I was like, okay, you guys didn't make me nearly enough money. I'm not going to do a bunch of work and then have go through the whole process again of you abusing what, what I did with you in good faith. So, but I have all those notes and I could easily do a version of that hand program here without, you know, breaching any agreements I had with them stemming back eight, nine years ago. So I could retool it slightly. There's things I do slightly different now. And I think are better to learn from than um, nine years ago. You, you, you would hope that, you know, I get better at teaching something nine years later. Okay, so I got the general line work here. Um, so I'm going to want the ears to be black. I'm going to want a rim light across the top of the head there. I think this will be a stronger image if this is all silhouetted here down to the sides of the head. Um, I can do a rim light there. Rim light there. There'd be a little bit of light that would go here. Rim light there. Rim light there in the deltoid. There. Should be black. Huh. That lets that pop and lets that be black. What I'm doing right now is determining um, what areas are going to be solid black. Um, to try and get a sense of her costume, but also keep some sort of depth and overlap running through things. Um, so that hopefully I can keep it consistent enough so it reads well. There, so then that marks you there, but this would be cross cropping that off. So that'd be solid black. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud as I go through this. I'm just thinking about um the way the anatomy moves through the figure when I do this. It's something I do, man. Um
want to run my dead there. I kind of miss the boots, man. I really do miss those boots. So if this, some light hitting that, maybe a little bit of light hitting the top of the calf so that breaks. All right, let's see uh, how this works. I'm going to do that hand last after I see how the rest of this stuff works, like this hand here. Um, if some of the stuff doesn't work over here, I might have to start doing the whole piece over again. Um, so you get to see me draw something twice tonight. This is just a um, slightly higher end pocket brush, like the Pentel pocket brush, but this one has real um, sable bristles. So it just has a little bit more snap. I'm just a little more happy with it. Um, I can't, honestly, I can't remember what brand it is, but the actual model is. Um, I think I ordered it off of Jet Pens last time I ordered from Jet Pen, so I could possibly check there if someone's really curious. Um, so they probably still have it in my account info if they saved it from a couple of years ago. Um, I was perfectly happy with the Pentel pocket brushes until I, I was feeling a little more, you know, let's try something fancy. And I got this brush and it's like, ooh, I really do like this one. I fill it with um, carbon fountain pen ink which is oh i just brushed right across my ring here which i took all that effort to get right i can fix that easily enough a little bit of white paint you know what even smarter than using the brush which can be a little finicky i'll use a fine line brush marker which is a little bit more controllable for this type of stuff i mean there's masters out there who do everything with like a beat up old bamboo brush and uh, just put all us Westerners to shame. I was just watching a video on uh, Living the Line. Um, it's Carson Gruba's channel over there. He does a lot of great tech stuff for, uh... <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of great videos. They just did a video watching uh, one of those Japanese master cartoonists. Um, the, my only contribution as a as a viewer of that was noticing that the guy looked like one of those um aged kids from akira um i mean you could, could literally walk in and play one of them he's perfect shape for it and size and everything um, doo -doo -doo. um oh yeah sorry <laughs> um and the guy was using uh these really nice artist quality bamboo brushes which mean which of course now means i want to order some and play around with them myself um because i mean it's it's what i do i always i see a new art tool i want to try it out yeah we're smudging ink from somewhere i'm smudging ink from somewhere Excuse me while I wipe down my hand. Oh, hang on. I actually bought some hand wipes for my studio for just this case. They're slightly exfoliating, so they grab the ink out of my, of my hands a lot more effectively. So I got some ink there on that side of the hand, and I think I got some in my handling hand, and so I got these little bits that hopefully they'll erase so I can just get rid of them with some white paint.
Okay. Let's see if these will erase a little bit. I'll probably have to touch up the stuff outside the border later. I can even use my uh, electric eraser with its um, grindy bit to erase that. That might be something you guys would be interested in seeing. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of smudge there. It's from the, uh, it's the ballpoint ink. This is a smoother paper than I usually use. And so, and weirdly enough, it's also taking a little longer to dry. So it's more inclined to smudge. So I have to be careful about that. And there it is. I find as I get older, I used to be really, really careful, like with my brushes to try and get those classical um, brush strokes down, like the ones you're all used to seeing, like those really fine um, Dick Giordano type brushy strokes. But I find I like dirty brush strokes. Yeah. Um, like where you see like the, some of the, the grit or the brush is not really like, like that there, that kind of brushy, Sumi ink type pen, uh, calligraphy stuff. Um, it just that that rough edge just makes it a lot more interesting to me visually, and then it kind of matches up with how scribbly my line work generally is. I'll just over there. If I do that rough stuff, if you can see it right in there where it gets really, really rough and overlaps the other line, um, it kind of blends the shapes together a bit. And um, then I just have to play around with a little bit of white paint maybe to uh, add a little bit of depth, some, uh, which is a nice consideration for um, such a black-on-black a -black figure here. It's a little different doing a comic page to get black and black reading out properly versus because they're, they're, you know, the average viewer or reader, I should say, the average reader is only going to be looking at a, a panel for what, five, 10 seconds while they're reading the panel. And uh, so your art doesn't have to be as pretty, although everyone, everyone, you know, thinks it should be uh, in, a, in one way or another. But um, do that dirty stroke right across there. These, these shadow areas. There we go. How's that reading? Um, but in a piece like this, like a commission where someone is, potentially could hang it on their wall, and then suddenly, you know, all all the speed tricks that that work fine for inside of a comic book, where where the the simplified gesture is far more important than anything else i mean it just needs to be read and read quickly um it's going to be stared at so you gotta you got you gotta get aim for a little bit more of the pretty Essentially, I'm using a dry brush technique to uh, get some of that information across.
might redraw that thumb up again. Just a little too clumsy. Hope my flipping the uh, drawing around isn't isn't disorienting or too disorienting. Yeah, after this week's technical screw-ups, I think I'm going to have to set up a little bit earlier. Hmm. See, that works across, across that. Still reads. I think it still reads. I go with a little bit of line work thereafter. All right. So this is the Catwoman largely done. I'm going to take some zero one scribbles here. And this is me operating on the idea that she's not wearing hyper shiny leather or rubber. So there won't be any like super highlights on her, on her costume. I'm almost dry brushing with the, uh, the ballpoint here. Now, if this is going to be colored, you could trust a good colorist to, to go along with like your your cues when you uh, describe this. Uh, say, I don't want the uh, the suit to be reflective, and then they would like, you know, the editor might disagree, of course. And then you know, it's, since they represent the company in this, they would they'd get the trump card on it. But um, a decent colorist can easily color this so it looks a little bit more matte. So I wouldn't have to do this uh, level of work into the black areas. It's going to be most tricky in with the uh, the hands, of course. This hand here, because it's like I want that. So I want that to uh, knock back a bit. So I'm going to try and pull off a, a reflected light on the underside of the hands here. Um, but also the idea, it's still nighttime. So the reflected light isn't as strong as, say, a real close-up light. So even though this is in shadow, there's going to be a similar dull matte letter, uh, rendering, rendering, lettering on the uh, underside of the hand here. And hopefully it'll still read as a hand. If not, I'm in trouble. Probably to avoid any more of that, that smudging, I should probably just grab a blank piece of paper to use as a uh, hand shield here. Oh, that's a whole script. I can't do that. What's this? Oh, all right. This is great. This is uh, some of the reference I printed out for the Lilith drawing for the other video. And I can just use this so I'm not dragging my big mitts all over my still drawing ink here. Thank you. 
Now, I think I want there's a pencil here. Um, I want a small moon. Where do I what I want? I want it to be up high. It's gonna be a small moon. So it actually reads as a moon. So I'm gonna suggest it. Um, yeah, this is probably the best spot for it. Think about like when you're placing something, you know, how it might relate to any curves drawn in your image. Um, so I got kind of an implied curve here from knee, fingertips, ear. So which goes over roughly there and I got an implied curve from here. So if I get it in this area, there's a good chance it's going to, you know, work. All right. So that's, and do I want it to be a full moon? Full moon is almost like, almost like a caricature. So let me, uh, let me carve out some of it. So it's um, bright enough for it to be moonlight, but not too much. Maybe a little bit more pencil work to plan out these bricks. So I got it like that. So I can have to do a slot like that, a slot like that. So that means that one is going to be like that. Slowing out like that. These are how wide my bricks are. So then this one's going to be like that. It's kind of big bricks for a rooftop, but yeah, me, me, me. All right, now. Cut a little piece of frisket and mask off the moon. So I didn't really, you know, plan this out as a, as much as I should. I'm doing a lot of this on the fly. So if it turns out yay, otherwise I'm going to owe someone a brand new Catwoman based on this drawing and redo it. I've been threatening that a lot, haven't I? I'm going to redo it if it sucks. Which is another reason why I prefer to do them at home at the studio. It's like nothing worse than being at a convention, doing someone their character, and they come back and you look at it and you're like, oh, and you're like, shoot, I don't have time to do another one at the con. So I'm going to cut out this very, very well. When the moon's almost full, like it's just got like a, like a little nibble out of it. What's a name for that? So I know when there's almost no moon left, it's a fingernail moon. And a uh, new moon's a full moon. And a full moon's a full moon. All right, so that's not going to get messed up. Um, I think I want to know what I know what I already want to do with her. I'm just going to slap a lot of tone around everywhere. So I'm going to mask this off. Uh, I'm going to do some white paint effects when it's done. Let me uh, grab the three in here and get these in here before uh, I forget. And suddenly I'm trying to ink pencil line that's disappearing. Okay, so let me tape off the edges. So I'm about to whip up them rubber stamps. Don't think I'll need them to be too precise for what I'm planning here. Where's my usual big roll of green tape? I got my finer stuff, but I want to use slightly thicker green. Oh, so I can do this. Some of this left, use this up. This is that ultra delicate 
uh, painter's tape. Oh, I should do this at the top. Uh, I find that when it comes right down to it, it's not particularly any better or worse than um, regular green tape. I have two rolls floating around. That is strange. I must have pulled over somewhere else. No, I didn't. So by masking that off, I think I'm getting across the idea that the only thing I'm really worried about being pure white on this piece is the moon. And you're not wrong. I didn't tear this piece of tape long enough. I can tear a slight bit more. There we go. Um, oh, I know what I want to do too. Okay, so I, I'm probably also going to use some of my post its as, my, as uh, make me masks, which is uh, what they're, what they're really best for. I got two different size post its I keep on hand at all times. I got these little ones, they're about inch and a half by inch and a half, and I got these like two and a half by two and a half, maybe three by three, two and a half by two and a half. And they're really handy for like just quick masking off whole areas really, really fast. So if I want to do that. I have no idea what those numbers were. I think it's mathing out something. And I can reuse these until the sticky on the back uh, wears out. Uh, scissors go over here. This tape goes there. That tape hmm, goes there. So I have my. I, I still only have my three stamps. I, I got uh, two more I want to make. And I want to make one this month. I want to make another new one next month. I don't want to, you know, go crazy and make so many stamps. I, I don't get a good experience of them till, um, uh, till months later. So I like to add a new one every month or two use it a lot, get a real sense of what it's capable of, then add another one. Because uh, one stamp might change what I decide I need for the next you know, next stamp I build. So this is my big 40% flat one. This is my gradation from like, mm, I'd say about 80% to 20%. And this is my 20%. Uh, I think I am going to make a bigger 20, like I'm going to make, this is my very first stamp I made. It was like just trying it out. So I did, it was like 40, 50 bucks. Um, and this one's like 80. So I think I'm going to make an $80 version of this one. So this big, and it's going to also be the 20%, just so I can fill big areas really easily. This is my gradation stamp. And I probably will also make a gradation stamp this size. This size is a perfect size for my ink pad. Do, 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 do. It's a uh, Ranger Archival Inks Jet Black Noir de J. And uh, gotta make sure I don't get more ink on my hands. Um, and it just, it's just great, man. It's great. I love it. I love these stamps. Cause I, I was like one of those guys who um, I tried out, you know, Zipatone or Letratone back in the days. And um, I loved it. And I, I even managed to pick up some Dua Shade paper. Uh, I think most famously made by, uh, I'll make sure I got the right angle here. Mark Farmer and Aliens. Howard Chaikin used it a lot in American Flag. Just a last little lingering bit there. I don't mind. I'm now used to the fact that uh, the, the little bit of masking I do immediately creates an area where it just doesn't match up because the, the stamps are so sensitive. Um, But you know, it's uh, so I, I, it's becoming part of the aesthetic, as it were. Oops, I missed. There we go. That's fine. And then I want to just use a light, noisy stamp. It actually creates a weird kind of value change I like. 
Um, that. So I'm also going to mask off this a little bit. I could have done this with tape, but I find that the tape pulls up more of the ink. Um, and so does the frisket. So I find the post-it notes, notes are a little more gentle on inked areas. So I guess there's a, there's a little bit of like, you know, oh, you're bad for the environment here. But um, oops. I just find it makes the work a little easier. So I'm, I'm going to be putting some of the darker 40 on the fore edge of the ledge, fore edge of the ledge. And I want it to be kind of rough and rocky because I'm going to make it crude and uh, worn and weather beaten and all that stuff. So if the messier the stamp goes down, the more I can go back in with some pen work after. And uh, and make it look like it's a natural and, uh, and intentional as opposed to just making do with what the stamps can do. There you go. Mm-hmm. Do then next is I'm going to mask off the underside ledge. I try as much as possible to use these post-its until they're just, you know, all used up. It just seems to be, you know, a little bit more environmental that way. Right, so you already see I have some values are showing up here. There's not much detail work. That's going to come with the pen work over top. Um, but the values here allow me to um, react to the coarseness of the pattern that goes down and add line work to support it and give the sense of detail that it's not really there. It's, it's implied detail. Now, what I'm also going to do is uh, there's these white points on Catwoman's body. I want to push back a bit along with like some of the stuff in her costume. I want to push back a bit and I'm going to use the 20% stamp to do that. So I can go along that line. So I might have to mask, unmask, and then remask a few times in certain areas. Uh, was that clear? Did that make sense? I hope it made sense.
And one of the wonderful things is I'm not wor worried at all about some overspill of the uh, the stamping because it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty forgiving when I do it this way it, because it's adding a certain amount of noise to the artwork. Um, I guess in the sense the way that uh, if you look at like Bilson Cavage or uh, Kent Williams pen and ink work, although there's not much of that to see anymore. Um, you can see that 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 looseness automatically creates a certain amount of um, flexibility in what you get across. So I'm going to right on top of this stamp hard, make sure it gets good coverage in there. And immediately she's now slightly darker. All the skin values all just dropped. And I don't have to press all the way through, but I can get that happening in all the areas that are a little shadowed. I'm using the corner, like just this little part of the stamp to get some of those dots to break up that sketchy loose white area that I left with the ink strokes I made. I do the same here on this knee. And again, because of that, that I guess halo would be the best way to describe it, that halo effect of um, the rubber stamp not being able to press all the way firmly down. I can actually be, I can leave little gaps around the line work and not worry too much about dots going out there, even though, again, I just finished saying it doesn't matter particularly much, especially the more loose, rough, and painterly, I guess, would be the term this gets. I think I have to do a little bit on this leg over here. Yeah, a little bit. Because it's if it's dark, everything's going to be dark. I actually kind of like you know some of that noise. That, see that noise that's happening on that sheet? I kind of like that. I want to be able to get some more of that happening in some of my backgrounds and stuff. Now, with up here around the moon, I kind of want the idea that there's clouds in front of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is, now that I've used these a bunch of times, I'm just going to like rip them. So I get that raw rough edge happening. Oops. I have to do, I'll have to do a little more sticky stuff to make sure it stays down. Not a lot, but just, just enough to uh, pin that down. that down. I'll pin that down. I'm just going to rely on that being there. I'm going to grab the, this is the gradation one, coming from one side. Going from where it would be further from the moon and 
a little bit from there, just to get the sense that uh, I have light, light values coming in. Remove that, that. No, I'm going to use a 20 for that. So I got that happening. Now I want a little bit more. Mm, there. So I got a straight line that showed up there. I want to eventually get rid of that. It's a little bit of a puzzle thing sometimes. Basically, I'm going to be building a lot of like loose, rough values everywhere. And hopefully that'll give a sense of clouds or I'm completely messing this up. See, I'm going to go back and white paint. That went way too dark for what I want. So you'll see me go fix that. I want to go a little bit darker here in the middle. And then lighter again. Because there's city lights coming up. So I'm thinking... Oh, let's take this one over here now. Randomize it a bit. I'm also going to go with white paint and everything to, uh, to do the, the effects directly. Sticky part in there. There we go. And I'm going to mask off her face. This is the uh, gradation stamp again. Yeah, just in there a little bit like that. A little bit like that going from there. Don't want to lose my ink pad. I almost fell off the table. I think I can just get away with using the 20 there, but I don't want to risk messing up the, the little bit of detail I put in Catwoman. So I'm going to mask off the important, important, important white areas or the skin areas in Catwoman here. And everything else can just pretty much go on top of that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. All right, 20%. Part of me that 
kind of wants to go darker. I might. I can go just a little bit in there. A little bit. No, I think it needs just a little bit of 40%, just to unify it a bit. It's a slightly thicker stamp. Yeah, I think I need to do that. But to do that, I am going to have to mask off her face because I don't want to ruin that. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Yeah, it needs that darkness. Mask off this part. Do it this way. And I think I'm done with masking and stamps. Everything else is going to be ink and white paint. Get all these masks out of the way. There's kind of an ink hazard because of all that stuff. Once they've been stamped with a lot. All right, let me take the as a file. You know, zero three. No. Well, maybe zero five is the right one. Essentially, it's almost like a stipple technique just to get that value. I'll go back and do some of this with the white as well.
So what I'm doing here is uh, getting across the idea that there's a bit of a shadow coming over the ledge. As she hovers over it. I have to go through with some heavier lines, certain areas. Yeah, zero, zero, zero 005 isn't the best for the what I'm doing right now. Try the zero 03 for the stuff in the foreground. Going like that. The light a little heavier around her head. I still need some more stamping up there. Sorry to jump back and forth, but sometimes you only see something after you're already there. Um, I should get a dedicated stamp rack if I'm going to keep doing this. Thanks, Brandon. It's almost as if I, I asked you to come in and, you know, notice. <laughs> now I want that to be a little ragged coming down there. 
And then we'll write it going up there. want to make the area around her head a little bit darker so her face pops a bit more. Pops, pops. I'm using it 20% because it's, it's the lightest stamp I got and it layers really nicely for doing this stuff. First kit. I'm also going to erase because there's pencil stuff there. Some pencil stuff down here. I want to get rid of too. to pop a bit like that. And the rest of this is going to be some white paint splattering around to break up the... Uh... Yeah, me and my white paint. Or my Batman jar full of dried up gouache that I uh, add water to. Every time I need a splatter. Nope, that was too much. Do, do, do. So I roll the water around, get the bottom wet, pick up some of the uh, water with the toothbrush, scrub it around the inside of the jar. A lot of the paint just flakes off, gets rehydrated because it's such a thin coating on the inside of the jar. And then I get a wonderful splatterable white paint. And I really should get an apron in the studio. I'm wearing a black black shirt right now. It's going to get covered. Oop. The uh, built up detritus there, back in the water here. So this is a dedicated white paint toothbrush. I don't do my teeth with this. And the splatter breaks up the, uh, the blacker, thicker areas of the rubber stamp quite nicely. And I can use my masks or I can just use a sheet of paper to like create temporary masks to get the kind of like cloud lines going in here. I have to load this up against him. 
I may not even be able to see what I just did. I can see it, but I oh, need a little bit more water. It's kind of cool. The older your toothbrush gets, the more the bristles will start falling out. So you got to be careful of that because some of those bristles could end up uh, being splattered onto your art. There you go. Actually, I'm going to put some splatter in that glove and then redraw it out. Yeah, that's doing it. Now there's some areas I want to daub out the white painted overspray. And you need an incredibly high tech item for that. And I used paper towels. It keeps the big blobs of white paint uh, from absorbing the black ink and graying down whatever ink you splatter down. That's pretty much it. Just got to, uh, to pull off the tape, see what needs to be touched up around the edges. Uh, I might go in with a little bit of white pen to do some stuff once I see what it looks like with the white edges revealed on the paper. The one big problem with this um, super delicate or uh, surface gentle painter's tape is it sticks to your fingers like crazy when you pull it off and to my dismay ah look at that <sighs> grab some of the surface of the paper there that's another reason why i don't like using uh, tape on the ink area I just lifted some of the paper surface luckily i didn't put any on any ink stuff Now that, that what just happened with the little surface pull up, I can ink over that if it does happen. Um, I'd rather not, for obvious reasons. Get some really subtle.
break up this uh, darker areas of cloud a bit with some something that breaks up any sort of the geometric shapes that come in from the stamps. I am tempted to make um, um, ragged edge stamps. So I, uh, I'm not always leaving these super straight edges everywhere. After all that, you really can't even see the shape of the moon anymore. Anyway, so um, there's Catwoman, um, Nighttime Thief. Uh, where should I sign this? I always, I always do that at the last minute, don't I? I think that looks like a good spot to sign. So let me sign there. Um, I think the one should do. There we go. Or there. That might be a nice spot to sign. Or this brick. Nice flat area here. I'll just sign it in perspective. There you go, Catwoman. Um, I think it turned out all right. Uh, nighttime, obviously on a rooftop, new costume. All right, so next week, guys, everyone, it's another full figure uh, character. It's Daredevil. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, everyone, you have a great night and week.